So if you've not seen me around in the past like two to three weeks, it's probably because I've been on the road traveling. Now I once uploaded a video of a cheap but quite impressive Airbnb and I had stayed in it in Nairobi and you guys seem to really like it. So here's another one for you guys, but this time it's in Nakuru, Kenya. It's interesting how much effort people are now putting into the Airbnb business with home conversions and even guys are just renting apartments to tap into some of that Airbnb market. How would you like spending a night in such an entire townhouse right in the heart of Nakuru town for only $20? <laughs> So yeah, you had me write $20 a night, but we actually spent less, maybe because it was a new listing and we were the first guest. Believe it or not, I paid just about $16 for a whole furnished two-bedroom house. Now, what do we have here? On entry, you first ushered into this porch area where you could leave your shoes if you so desire. You'll straight away notice that the place is quite clean, very well taken care of, though definitely it's quite dated in as far as the whole vibe, architecture, fittings, ambience, and so on go. This unit is most likely a townhouse built in the 1980s or 90s, but for such a good deal, should you really care? Let me know in the comment section down below. Off to the right of the entry porch is the fully furnished kitchen. The amount of stuff in here makes me feel like this is literally a home, not just an Airbnb. There's even a rolling pin if you decided to cook some chapatis and <laughs> as expected, you also get nearly every other kitchen appliance you'd expect. A fridge, a microwave, a cooker, a kettle and so have you. There is a ton of pots and pans present, but as mostly in Airbnb's folks would just carry some takeaway food. You'd probably enjoy the services of the utensils and the microwave, I guess. I should mention that I also noted some answer provided on the floor, maybe after spilling something, but <laughs> I guess the value here outweighs such issues. Then straight ahead, we get into the living room. At this point, you'll notice that we actually got in through the backyard, through the back door, and the living room actually has its own front door, an entry door. Okay, so this is a combined living and a dining area. We've got these two coaches. Is it purple? Whatever color this is, and some colored pillows. They were comfortable enough such that we never really used the dining area. With a glass table and stools in here, that's really all we needed to watch TV and dine. And talking about TV, there was a cheapish smart TV here, probably about 40 inches, but good enough for whatever you'd want to watch. And it was actually connected to the internet, though the internet here was still just one of those portable 4G hotspot devices. Uh, the building is not really connected to fiber or such other high speed internet. But for our needs for a night, however, that was just okay. Now, there's this other massive TV that was right here, just like a piece of deco. I guess it was broken down long ago. It wasn't working. But if you've ever watched such, comment down below. Let me know your experiences from those days. <laughs> My personal thought, however, is that the host would just, you know, get rid of this thing, I guess. But that said, I wasn't really interested in the dining area, but this little place it's for just in case you want to use it. Other than that, the decor in here was definitely dated. I don't know why, but it gave me some of those Somali vibes. Maybe it's the wallpaper at some areas. Maybe the wall hangings. You get me, right? <laughs> but still, I'd say that the place is spacious and comfortable enough, especially for the cost. I'm sure you would very well be able to host a family of like two children if you elected to vacation in Nakuru, you know. Okay, now let's take a look at the bedrooms. So there's this kind of black staircase that leads you up to the sleeping areas. 
there's actually three bedrooms here, or maybe two and a half, depending on how you look at it, because the third one is more or less a nursery of sorts, being about nine square meters at most. But anyway, in the other two bedrooms, you'll get beds dressed like hotel beds with white beddings. I really should say that the sleeping in here was quite comfortable and an abundance of pillows was provided if you're into that. The master bedroom is uh, quite bigger than the second bedroom, but one thing that was sticking out is the fact that there's actually no wardrobes or closets for that matter, which should be an issue if you're going to stay for long, but just for a few nights, that's not an issue. And none of the bedrooms have an ensuite bathroom. Also, a point to note if that's important to you. Talking about the bathrooms, we got here a full bath and a half bath, both of which are upstairs. The full bath is really just a shower and a water closet, nothing much to write home about. But at least the host provided quite a lot of toiletries for an Airbnb, including several liters of shower gel. The other smaller washroom contains, you know, a water closet, nothing much. So yeah, what do you guys think about this place? I know the vibe is a bit old, but seeing as it's located right inside Nakuru CBD and with a ton of front and backyard, it seems to me like it poses quite a good value for money. You could even pack 10 cars if you wanted to, believe it or not. So that's it for today, guys. There's more of these Airbnbs plus other neat videos coming. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and turning on the notification bell so that you do not miss those ones. Meanwhile, if you like this one, you know what to do. Don't be shy. There's a like button right down below. See you guys in the next one. And as always, no pressure.